What's up again guys? Yeah, it's me, your friendly neighborhood Dovahkiin, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access. And uh, before we begin, be sure to hit on the subscribe button for more great videos. Okay, in the last episode, we gathered our party, cleared the ravaged beach, and spent some bonding time at the campsite. Today, we're gonna explore our first dungeon, the Chapel Ruins. This area is infested by bandits, and there's no point in taking the non-confrontational approach. That way is for fucking wimps. I'm here for the kill EXP. If you've watched my previous bits, you know that I am a practitioner of guerrilla warfare, and I detailed that in my second episode. Now to expound on the ambush. More often than not, to set up your squad properly, you need to unchain your characters. By the way, you can hit on the spacebar to enter turn-based mode to fine-tune your movements. But uh, me, being a veteran on this because of DOS 2, and to expedite things, I'm just gonna set it up in real time. to individually join the rest of your squad in battle. Also, carefully observe the changes in the turn order while they are joining, and witness how OP my ambush tactic is.
friend, that is how you make things easy. Anyway, in the fight, I could have just easily gone for this foundation block and crushed the crap out of the two bandits below. But uh, based on the log, you won't gain their kill EXP, so I had to manually defeat them. This hole leads to the bed chambers underneath, but I'm not gonna jump in because the room you land in is disadvantageous for combat. Instead, I'm gonna use the locked main door which is guarded by another bandit, who needs some sort of convincing. Thank you, Gibblebock! Everything alright out there? You sound a bit shaken, boss. Hang on while I find the key. You're dead! Prayers. Only dust and silence. Who are those prayers for? Normally the patron god is obvious. Not here. Ancient, indecipherable text covers the plaque. A dead tongue. Whoever worshipped here must be long gone. Okay, this next door which unlocks with a lever opens up to a bigger bandit fight. Five enemies to be exact. And you don't need to overthink on your tactics, such as barricading the door, etc. You simply have to do an explosive entry. Anyhow, for the first time, Shadow will prove her worth in the party, with her Blessing of the Trickster subclass spell. Just watch.
No damage at all. This is the room you would have landed in from the hole outside. How does it open? It opens up with a hidden lever. This is a trapped room. It becomes an inferno to be exact. And the most important discovery here is this button. That might be worth a look. Alright, so that door leads us back to the Ravage Beach, where we found Shadow. Now I'm gonna let Star handle this one. Just move the crates between the button and the sarcophagus. Unlike the rapier which relies on dexterity, this spear is not a finesse weapon, but I'm still gonna equip it to Star, whose primary ability is Dex, for no reason at all. Well, until he gets a better finesse weapon. And that's how you prevent this chamber from becoming an inferno. Oh. 
Armed scribes. No sign of a struggle. I wonder what was so subversive about their words that they commanded protection. Okay. You will find several entombed corpses in this area. Before you explore further, loot them of everything. Their weapons in particular. Now to acquire something somewhat valuable. Forbidden knowledge, without a doubt. situations wherein you know that there will be ability checks, always use the Guidance Cantrip. Again, Shadow becomes useful. And before I click on the die, I'll quickly show you the roll bonuses from this spell. This book is far lighter than it should be, with such a massive lock. As the lock opens, a loose page comes with it. Magic pulses from the parchment. What was once script is now an obliterated scrawl. You have a sense these are names, a list, but of what? Gods. These are the names of gods. Once lost but now restored after the second sundering. Entire pantheons have dwindled and been reborn, silently recorded by this book. Let's see what we got. Alright, earlier I said to relieve the corpses of their weapons. In a few moments, you'll know why. Cause we're gonna be in for a showdown against the undead. Anyhow, this will be my first time to use mage armor. Which won't work if you're wearing any sort of armor besides clothing. So Star is now wearing my mains leather helmet. I don't have proficiency in it anyway. Just wore it to hide my knife ears. By the way, the squad is already set up, so let's do this. woke up.
case you haven't noticed, these undead are all unarmed. And that's the reason why I pocketed all their weapons beforehand. And that is how you make things easy. Rising from the dead just to protect some dusty baubles. Fools. Please, save your regrets. This place isn't worthy of them. Let's move. As I've mentioned in my previous vid, I'm romancing Lizelle, so her approval is meaningful than Shadows. Now, let's find out what this script is all about. A lot of effort to hide one sarcophagus. Here lies the guardian of tombs. Through knowledge comes atonement. He has spoken, and so thou standest before me, right as always. What a curious way to awaken. Now I have a question for thee. What is the worth of a single mortal's life? Curiosity. Nothing more. Wilt thou answer my question? So, I ask again. What is the worth of a single mortal life? In death, that is so. Very well. I am satisfied. We have met. And I know thy face. We will see each other again at the proper time and place. Farewell. This talkative skeleton will be handy, as he will later visit our camp and offer revival services. Speak with the dead. 
Now that is an interesting spell. Now let's get out of here via a hatch to the surface. That is all there is for now, thanks for watching. Also check out other videos from Sabbath Band Philippines and don't forget to subscribe. See you on my next vid, peace out y'all.